This video comes from Insider Business, the title, Why Oil Paint is So Expensive, So Expensive. So, I mean, as, as, as you probably already know, oil paint is uh, notoriously expensive. I wonder what they're going to add here. It's probably just about the process. It has to be milled many, many times to get a good consistency, and the actual raw materials are quite expensive themselves and require a lot of sort of uh, safety measures to enable them to be mixed properly. So we'll see if, if my hypothesis is correct, if any of these things are, are contributing to why it's so expensive. I'm curious to see what they have to add here on insider business. Oil paint is simple. At its most basic, it's just a mixture of oil and pigment. But depending on the color and quality, a litre of this paint could cost you between $285 and $1,000. Oh, but, but a litre? I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of paint. There's, uh, yeah, I mean, buying anything more than a 200 milliliter tube, you're, you're yeah. That, that kind of puts it, puts it out of perspective in a way, but... Oil paint has been used for hundreds of years. It's made from a drying oil like flaxseed and pigment sometimes with fillers and thickeners added. When mixed and crushed, these ingredients bind and thicken to form a permanent paint. While the rise of oil paint is associated with the Renaissance, paintings using poppy seed oil have been dated as far back as 7th century Afghanistan. But there's one key reason this paint hasn't ever been cheap. Pigments cost a lot of money. Yeah, pigments, those are tough, especially uh, these days. So it doesn't matter if you have loads of pigment, if it's a bad quality pigment. You're looking for light fastness, so it doesn't fade, and tests on light fastness that have been going on for generations, in fact, for some pigments. So you're not going to create a masterpiece, and then 50 years down the line, it's completely washed out. There's a lot of painters that have had this sort of experience where, you know, they made, they made these portraits, and they weren't using very stable materials. So after 100 years, 200 years, they started to fade and, and their portraits just ended up looking like ghosts. So it's kind of interesting that some of these raw materials are, are actually so, uh, yeah, finicky in a way. The favorite imperial color in Roman times, Tyrian purple, was a bright pigment made from the glands of sea snails. And it could take 12,000 snails to make just two grams of the color. Indian yellow was originally made from the urine of cows fed only on mango leaves. And in the 16th to 19th centuries, mummy brown was actually made with the ground up remains of Egyptian mummies. I had no idea about that. I didn't know there was any color that was made from mummies. That's, that's incredible. Okay. Ultramarine, literally meaning beyond the sea, as it had to be mined in Afghanistan. It was made from lapis lazuli, which in its purest pigment form can still cost up to $30,000 per kilo. The gemstone was used to make the pigment until a synthetic version was created in 1826. And the vibrant blue was valued so highly in the Renaissance that it was generally reserved for painting the robes of the Virgin Mary. It's a shame that this was such a highly sought after color and, and that it was so popular at the time because it became a major trend and then you just have so many of these, these bright blue fabrics and it's absolutely horrible for for the painting it just ruins the sort of sense of liveliness and, and it just kills everything it just stops you right there we have then milling so it depends we're using different type of machines so okay. we're using granite ceramic or steel then we are testing okay so testing the viscosity the green and of course the color this is really interesting what they're doing here so they're actually measuring to see how how thin they've gotten that paint. So they want to get the pigment and the oil ground down so finely. They run it through the mill so many times that it ends up, you know, as thin as, thin as hairs almost in that range. Above all else, the quality of oil paint needs to be reliable. As professional artists need to guarantee that what they're working on now will last for hundreds of years. And despite comparatively new paints like acrylic, oil still remains an artist favorite. We've still got works that are still beautiful and relevant from the 15th century. Exactly. So why, I mean, some of these things, it just really makes you wonder, like, why, why change anything? Why, why do anything different? 
if you know it can last for that long, <laughs> I don't know you should be uh, hoping for much else. That's pretty substantial. Well, uh, there you have it. I was hoping for some more detailed explanations, but I guess uh, the pigments are pretty expensive. They can be hard to find. And the actual process, the milling process, getting everything into uh, the right state and, and, and really producing it is a very time intensive and, and difficult process. So that's why oil paint is so expensive. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Hopefully you learned something here. If you have any videos you'd like me to react to, if you have any questions, anything you'd like to see, feel free to leave that in the comments. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.